the Sheep project was aimed to um, to see how genome editing could uh, be of benefit to consumers in, in, in a small crop. Uh, and for that we choose chicory, which is a relatively small crop, and small I mean grown on a little little areas. The sheep project will benefit, I think, already the whole value chain of chicory, uh, from the farmer until the consumer, potentially. Uh, but again, uh, chicory is a qu quite a minor crop, minor in the sense that it is, uh, the area where it is grown is, is not so large and also the market is not so big. But I think uh, it is a kind of an example who, how you could implement such a project also in other crops, also in larger crops which are grown on a worldwide scale. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, indirectly, the sheep project will also influence yeah, other parts of the world and other crops. I think, of course, there's been lots of nice leads in terms of uh, bioactive molecules, which uh, could be useful in, in the medical field. That would be a direct uh, advantage to the consumer. Uh, for the farmers, of course, we have uh, some very nice uh, results on uh, breeding applications. So we've been using genome editing to uh, actually make breeding in chicory more easy. Uh, and of course, if that's possible, then you can speed up the entire um, me method of, of breeding. And that, uh, for the farmer, that uh, gives them varieties much quicker and, and perhaps varieties with more interesting uh, uh, characteristics. Uh, for them in the field. We show that you can use these new plant breeding techniques in order to improve a crop light like chicory for the production of, of more health beneficial inulin in my case. There are several possibilities. One is that for the, uh, let's say the most direct uh, benefit would be for the industry, uh, the existing industry uh, using chicory as a product um, so for the extraction of inulin, which is the main uh, product, um, the uh, varieties that have been developed by uh, new plant breeding technologies um, can lead to um, reduced energy consumption for the production of inulin. So that's an environmental benefit, but also, of course, reduced uh, costs for the um, companies that exploit chicory. Um, and that way to make uh, the processes more efficient uh, and more, um, yeah, with more benefits. Um, and the other, I would say, one other potential benefit of the project is more long term, is the development of new products. Um, so those based on those, for example, those sesquiterpene lactones, where new varieties uh, can be brought to the market for specific applications, essentially in the area of uh, human health. Yeah, what, what we have seen from our assessment is that uh, the small or the, the development in the, the chick project also unfolds in the global economy. So there can be benefits to farmers um, and as well as mentioned earlier before that the greenhouse gas emissions can be reduced, the farmers income could be improved or something like that. So there are over the whole society, over the whole economy or the environment um, benefits can be created. Uh, but also for a cheaper production, more yield of inulin. So this is also good for the farmer, it's good for the industry. When it comes to genome editing and, and genome edited plants, I think that Chick project really could contribute uh, to increasing the know-how and, and also the consumer and, and stakeholder point of views, how, how it is perceived and, and, uh, and what might be the future of the genome editing. And then, uh, then on the other hand, uh, as uh, myself, I'm really uh, excited about the bioactivity potential of the of the chicory terpenes and 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 uh, there were a lot of um, 
very uh, interesting interesting results obtained so so uh, for example uh, this global threat of antibiotic resistance that that we are facing in the world so uh, so that we could see that this kind of um, waste uh, stream uh, of the industrial crop could could potentially contribute to to fighting against the antibiotic resistant bacteria also so i think that uh, those are something that we couldn't see in beforehand and then now now uh, we saw quite uh, interesting results furthermore um, we have provided a, a very comprehensive overview um, on the regulatory and legislation um, landscape in Europe and in the world um, from which political parties and other stakeholder groups can benefit as they find everything condensed um, in one report or publication and uh, have a good comparison and idea of how the regulatory regimes are changing um, over time as we have kept it updated during the runtime of the project to see the development um, on technical sides and also on the regulation side. Societal benefit, I must say. And of course, um, the whole goal of this project was to show also for policymakers that using these new plant breeding techniques really can be beneficial because it's fast, it's really targeted. And that's for Europe important but also the goals that we reached are also important outside uh, Europe. The, the benefit that we are producing here, if we succeed in communicating it, uh, is that we have an example of how um, we can use um, a stakeholder engagement structure um, and th that follows the principles of a responsible research and innovation to a degree that allows for a reasonable steering of such a large project even in a uh, politically contested uh, area. Project, I mean, really helps uh, the, the EU community in, in again, in, in uh, yeah, better knowledge about these techniques. So, and that that is what I really loved about this project as well. Not only the focus on the science, but also the focus on the communication, and not a directive communication. Look, this is what we scientists can do, and this is how you should implement it. But really, a dialogue. If we can do this. What would you think then? Would you like it? Would you? And what is? What are your objections? 